So today uh, we will start with Coulomb's law. We will understand Coulomb's law in vector form. Now to understand the Coulomb's law in vector form, we must understand the Coulomb's law in the scalar form first. What is Coulomb's law? It tells us that if two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by some distance they may attract each other or they may repel each other whether the force is attractive or repulsive it depends on the nature of the charges if both the charges are of same nature the force would be repulsive if both the charges are of opposite nature the force would be attractive let's take an example and suppose that Q1 and Q2 are oppositely charged. That means one is positive and other is negative. They attract each other with equal force. Doesn't matter whether they are equal or not. I mean, if Q1 is one coulomb and Q2 is million coulomb, that doesn't make any difference. The force of attraction on both of them will be same. And the magnitude of force is given by k q1 q2 by r square. This k is called, it's a constant, it is called as electrostatic constant. Now this k is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now this much is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square. Now Let's come to understand the Coulomb's law in vector form. Suppose there is a charge Q1 and there is a charge Q2. Now we know, let's connect this charge from the origin, we get a vector, correct? This vector we may call position vector of charge Q1. And this vector is the position vector of charge Q2 so we write it as R2 now we know that this is now this 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 separation or you can call this vector as the displacement vector or we can write this as R1 or we can write this as R2 minus R1 vector now the magnitude of R2 minus R1, if we take the mod, the magnitude of R2 minus R1, it is called the separation or the distance between the two charges. That means we can say that this is separation, separation between the charges. So the magnitude of force is K. Q1 magnitude of charge first magnitude of charge second by R square now the force may be attractive may be repulsive for the time being let's say both are positive then the force would be repulsive so to Q2 will exert force on Q1 in this direction right and we call this as force on particle first due to particle second and we write it F1 2 and so this will also experience a repulsive force and we call this force as force on particle 2 due to particle first right now to understand this in vector form to understand this in vector form we need to understand a little bit of vector or unit vector you can say we know that this vector is R2, 1. This vector is R2, 1. So this is actually equal to R2 minus R1. So if we take a unit vector in this direction, if I take a unit vector in this direction, I have to write R2, 1 cap, which is simply equal to R2, 1 divided by magnitude of r21 this is by definition of a unit vector if you want to find unit vector then you have to write unit vector is equal to the vector divided by its magnitude 
Now, similarly, what is this vector? If you take a vector from charge Q2 to Q1, you have to write this as vector R12. And if you want to find a unit vector in this direction, then what will you write? You will have to write R12 cap. And it is also defined like this charge. So, let us write the force in vector form. We write force is equal to K Q1 Q2 by separation square. Now, what is separation? Separation is mod R2 minus mod R1 square. And if we are finding this F12, we have to write this F12. Now, when we are taking force on Q1, we need to write this unit vector R1 to cap. Now, let me explain this. Why we put this unit vector here? Because when we write Coulomb's law in vector form, we have to put the charge with its sign. If you have Q1 minus 2 Coulomb, you have to put here Q1 as minus 2. But if you are finding the magnitude of force, you just have to take the value of charge. You don't have to take minus 2. You just have to take 2. Now, let us let us check the argument we are uh, going to discuss here. If both the charges are positive, this F12 will be in this direction. That means F12 is in the direction of R12 cap. That's quite, you know, obvious. If you take both charges positive, you will have a positive sign here. You will have a positive sign here. That means that this force, F12 cap, that means force on Q1 is in the direction of R12 cap. Uh, but if one of the charges is negative and the other is positive, the force would be attractive. That means the force would be in this direction, what we call it F12 vector. Now, if any one of them is negative and the other is positive, you will have a negative sign here. That indicates that the force on Q1 and R12 vector are in opposite direction. That's quite obvious from our reasoning. That's why when we write Coulomb's law in vector form, we have to take the charge with its sign. And we have to put a unit vector like this. Now we can also write this like F12, force on charge particle first due to second as equal to K, Q1, Q2 by R2 minus r1 mod and a square and you know what as you have written r21 cap is equal to r21 vector divided by its magnitude so we can write r12 cap as equal to r1 minus r2 and divided by its magnitude and what is its magnitude it is r1 minus r2 so if you if we use this expression instead of this this formula would become like this k q1 q2 now look this is square of mod and we have another mod here that will make cube of mod right that will make it a cube of mod so what we're going to write like this we can put it here as R1 minus R2 divided by mod R1 minus R2 mod. Now we can write this as R2 minus R1 whole cube and then here as R1 minus R2 cap. Now this is force on the charge Q1 due to the charge Q2 in vector form. If you don't want to write in this form, you can simply write the force in this form, no issue, no problem at all. And similarly, if we want to write the force on the charge Q2, how do we write? It's a good question. So, force on the charge Q2 will simply be written as like this, force on the charge 
2 q2 due to charge first is equal to k q1 q2 by what the separation separation you can take r1 minus r2 mod square then we have to take this unit vector here r21 cap now let's check it suppose both the charges are positive then force on q2 will be in this direction which is in the same direction as you can see the direction is r21 cap so if one of the charges is negative the force would be in this direction and this direction is opposite to r21 cap why because if one of the charge is negative and the other is positive we will have a negative sign here which indicates that f21 force will be opposite to r21 cap so that was all about coulomb's law in vector form in next class we will try to do some problem based on coulomb's law then Take care. Bye-bye.